Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. The Noonday Gun has gone off here in our Cape Town studio where we're based, which signals the start of our weekly webinar. My name is Neil Peterson. I'm the founder and content in chief of Real Estate Investor, South Africa's leading independent real estate content and education platform for more than 16 years. We're really passionate about serving the South African real estate investor, property and business community through our digital platforms, REI.co.za, our monthly digital magazine, Real Estate Investor, and our virtual and in-person events. So I'm really delighted to be your host and moderator for today's masterclass, and uh, I'd like to welcome you all to this masterclass brought to you by Real Estate Investor. And uh, today, in celebration of Women's Month, we're going to focus our topic on empowering success, women in property and business, lessons from trail leading trailblazers. And we've got two of them right with us today, Margaret Hirsch and Velda Darrox, who I'll introduce to you all very shortly. Uh, for those of you that read Real Estate Investor magazine, um, you'll also see that both Margaret and Velda, along with Police Ryan, actually grace our cover this month, um, which is Women's Month. So it's a celebration of all. So first, before we go ahead, a little bit of housekeeping. If you do accidentally log out by some chance, just remember, Use the same link as before, you'll, you will get back in. And for those registered attendees, we get this question all the time. You know, for whatever reason, you could not attend today's live version. And we know there's some people, life happens, you can't attend. You say, please send me a recording. Yes, we will send you a recording if you have registered. If you don't get the recording, you can always go to our rei.co.za website and under replays in the event section, um, we will post it there within the next day where you can view it at your leisure. So to you, our audience, we encourage your interaction and participation in today's webinar. Please submit your questions. And that's very important. This is interactive. We want you to give, ask lots and lots of questions throughout the webinar. And we will pose to, to both Margaret and Velda today. Um, our resident guest. So to pose a question, you simply type your question and submit it via the Q&A box, not the chat box. And I know some of you will put it in the chat box. <laughs> That's for general comments. And it's located on the bottom right-hand side of your screen anytime during the, the, the masterclass. So we'll deal with your questions during this masterclass, um, during it, and also when we at the final session. So moving on today to our uh, masterclass, Empowering Success, Women in Property and Business. So let me briefly uh, just introduce you to our panelists before they introduce themselves. So our first guest, Margaret Hirsch, she's co-founder of Hirsch's Home Stores, an empowering advocate for women's success and a savvy property investor. And our second guest is Valda Durrux. She's regional manager at Tuff. Uh, promoting entrepreneurship and impacting communities through property investments. So, as I mentioned, they're also on our cover, so please also read more about them in the Real Estate Investor magazine. So we're going to delve into stories, experience of Margaret and Valda, who have not only made a significant impact in their respective industries, but have also paved the way for other women to succeed. So in a world that knows no gender, we invite you to join us on a journey that pays homage to the spirit of women who have risen above and beyond in the domains of property and business in South Africa. And uh, so we're thrilled to have them here today to share their unique insights into wealth creation, business, property. And by the end of today's session, we hope that you'll not only be richer in terms of knowledge, but also inspired to take action and apply these principles in your life. So now more than ever, South Africans, we need a boost of positivity, we need hope, we need inspiration, and that's exactly what we have today, and we always say success begins in the mind. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome our first panelist, welcome Margaret Hirsch. Do you want to introduce, first introduce yourself to the audience, uh, just for starters? Okay, so my name is Margaret Hirsch. I'm executive director of Hirsch's Home Stores, which is my primary business, but my main business is actually property because, as most of you know, we own all our own properties, and I'm a great advocate for women's um, empowerment, and my goal is to have every woman financially independent, and the best way to become financially independent is to make sure you've got a roof over your own head. 
And how do you do this? You start small. I started by saving a hundred rand a month for my first house. Now it wasn't a house that I wanted to live in. It was the house that I could afford. So, um, and what I did is I bought it. I saved a hundred rand a month until I had half the, de the money for deposit. And then I took a bond for the rest. And I put a tenant in and he paid the bond off and I paid it off as quickly as I can, could. Now, you might say, how did you do that? I, in those days, that, that house, which, and I'll even give you the address, it was one Atterbury Road in Durban North. I bought it for 2,000 Rand, which was a lot of money way back, way back when. But that has now appreciated and grown. So but what I did is I, I let that get, be paid off. I sold it. I bought it further up the road, slightly nicer house, 97 Lothian Road. I bought that house. I paid that off. And that is how I started my property business. You know, you've, it, every journey starts with the first step. You've got Wonderful. to take the first step to get there. And today, I not only have a, a big uh, property company in South Africa, but at the moment, I'm talking to you from um, Fort Lauderdale in, in Miami, uh, Florida. And um, yeah, it's just amazing here. Um, I have a property business here as well. And you can do it, but you've got to start. It starts with the first step. So every woman who's watching, please take that first step. Start saving for your deposit today. And then I'm going to hand you over to Velda. Because yeah, that's what good. she does. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so Valdo, great intro there, Margaret. I know you gave us a lot right up front over there because we're going to get into that detail because it's so important and it's a wonderful story. So, Valdo, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Thanks for that, Margaret and Neil. So, I'm Valdo Derox. I'm regional head for the Cape region. That's the Eastern and Western Cape for um, a South African-based company called Tough Limited. So Tuff basically is a niche um, commercial property financier specializing in affordable housing solutions. I come from a background in banking. So as a young graduate, just finished um, university, I thought, okay, what is it that I want to do? So I went into banking. I was fortunate enough to start a program with, with APSA, a management training program. And then I asked myself, as a young female of color in this beautiful country, where can you go to make a difference? So I ventured into the daunting world at that time of commercial property finance, completely male dominated. But um, I must say that um, I endured all the stresses and all the hardships. And yeah, I did commercial property finance at APSA, Standard Bank and Invest Tech, structuring different property solutions. And that's where I am today. So um, I'm loving it at Tough. Um, we work with entrepreneurs from all spheres of life, starter, emerging, and established ones to make differences in the different com communities that we serve. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Velda. That's fantastic. I think, uh, and we're going to delve more into that talk. We could even talk about the property market and the successes and the people that you're actually assisting success along the way. Um, so, Margaret, you got up at four o'clock this morning. I mean, this is like your daily ritual. I mean, I know you're in Fort Lauderdale. There's six hours difference. So, I mean, you had to get up really, really early just to attend this webinar. But it seems no normal for you. You shared a little bit about your start of your personal story and how you started to build your 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 business, your career, and, and then your personal wealth because you've achieved incredible success and you've smashed the glass ceiling to bits. <laughs> so maybe you can just tell us, just tell us where it all started. That's such a great story. And I think everybody needs to know this. Yeah, so it all started, but I knew I was a serial saver. I've always been a saver. And I see people walking around with their cups of coffee, you know, that they paid for fortune for and I think boy I that I would put that money into this into the account but anyway you've got to start saving I always say when you look at your salary you've got to save 10 percent you've got to invest 10 percent and that's where the investing in property comes in and you've got to give 10 percent to charity you've always got to help somebody who's there's always somebody worse off than you and if you do that your whole life will go well but what I want to ask all the people watching is do you have a vision board because if you don't have a vision board you're not going to get it you know the reason most people don't get what they want is they don't know what they want and so long as you want and you know God's busy there's eight billion of us on this earth and he's really busy and he hasn't got time to for you to be fiddle farting around you've got to say god this is what i want and i used to put a picture of the house that i wanted up now when i put that picture up i had no and i didn't even have a thought of how i was going to get it it seemed so far advanced but i knew what i wanted and I actually wanted a house in those days. I used to live in Durban North and I wanted a house in Durban North. So I bought a piece of land and I built my first house. And it's a crazy thing because when I paid for my first house, I then, uh, when I moved, I paid for my dining room table. And when I moved after that, I paid for my son's pram for his baby. I paid exactly the same as I paid for that house. So that's how you know money goes up and you've got to be able to keep track of it. 
And why I started investing in property is I wanted to do something for my old age because being an entrepreneur, I didn't have a pension fund. And I had to, I thought, what can I invest in that's going to keep up with inflation and make sure that I have a pension fund? So I thought I'd dabble in stocks and shares. Well, that was a disaster. I lost all my money straight away. And I thought, I'm never going to do that again. So I started investing then in property and I built my, my property portfolio. And the first business property I bought was 27 Amschlonga Rocks Drive, which was which we still own to this day. I bought it in an auction. And that was a really scary thing. I'd never been to an auction before, but it was um, the person who owned it uh, had taken to alcohol and he was losing his business and this property came up for sale. So we went to the auction and it was probably the most stressful thing we've ever done, but we managed to get the property. And then what happened is just when you thought you got it, some other guy who was the local lawyer came in with a higher bid. And we had gone into our absolute max to get it. And he came in with a higher bid. So you learn this along the way with smaller amounts. People say, but Margaret, I can't afford to invest. I say, you have to, because even if you're investing 100 Rand, at least you're learning how to invest. Because you can't wait till you've got a million Rand, because you might lose that. So you learn all these tricks along the way. And then from there, we bought that. We paid it off. We bought the next one. And so it went. Um, those who remember, I bought 89 Broad Street, which was right in the middle of Durban. In those days, it was fantastic to have a shop in town. Down, because that all changed but you'll never lose money in property because it always keeps going up so I always tell people to get get your deposit and then go to people like Valda to to get it but don't sit with that bond for your whole life pay that bond off as quickly as you you can now, now Valda I know you you don't advocate that people should pay the bond off as quickly as they can but I always tell them to <laughs> <laughs> yeah great so that's a great way so we're weaving into the conversation here, Valda. So uh, maybe it's, it's your opportunity. I know you gave a brief intro exactly to what you do. So maybe we can tell us, you know, um, you know how it started for you. And you gave us a little bit of that, um, but maybe we can get also into sort of the property investing sort of journey as well. As well. Okay. So um, so from a personal perspective, I've, I've always loved property and I thought, okay, commercial property property finance is the way to go but uh, you know as a, as a youngster then um, you needed to get to the basics and you really needed to understand it so I made it my mission in life to really understand the industry and then understand the sort of guiding principles um, to which you you will you will start with your property journey and that is when I learned that you know what I love the property finance inside of it so I knocked on people's doors. I learned to understand it. I mean, I was, I was, I, I made it my point and my mission in life to find a good support network to really, because I mean, if you, if, because it's other people's money eventually that you, that you start to manage and you need to convince them to start investing in buildings and all of that. And as Margaret said, yes, you know, as a financier, you make money by people keeping their loans on the book for a longer period. But also, you know what, if you pay off that asset, that means you can you can roll it on and you can start building a portfolio. You can go on to your to, to your next asset. So what we do at Tough is exactly that. So we start with your, your basic entrepreneur, somebody that's got a dream, but somebody that's really working towards really building and fulfilling that dream. So as Margaret said, you start with your savings because unless you've got, you cannot invest into a property if you do not have anything to put in yourself. So that is what we call the equity. So it's very important for property. If you want to start playing in, investing in property, you need to start saving as Margaret said. And you know what? We, we understand that times are tough in South Africa, but we say that you can start small. You don't need to buy a hundred unit building to start off with. You can start with your, your fourplex. You can start with your 10 units. I mean, the equity requirement there is a bit, it's much less than for 100 units. And that is exactly what we do as stuff. We say, you know what, we focus on starter, emerging and established entrepreneurs. The requirements for investing and your maximum limits per category is, is different. So as a starter, you can start small and we, we literally hold your hand throughout the journey in order to create that impact, because we say at ultimately, we want to see sustainable human settlements out there. And it must be decent living conditions for people to live and thrive in, because that is when you see the impact. Fantastic. So Margaret, I mean, on your side, that's, well, that's a great, we're going to open up a little bit more on that, because you, you particularly finance in the commercial sector, student accommodation, amongst other, not only inner city, you mentioned last time, 
but we'll go into that because there are some people going to be listening out there and say, hey, I want to get into the market. You inspired exactly what Margaret has said and what you've said. But Margaret, let's let's talk a little bit about your business because you started off Hershey's alongside also being a property investor. So a lot of people look at you and they think, wow, Margaret has achieved incredible success. Look at the business side of things. Yeah. So maybe just because, you know, not everybody would say, but I'm not, I'm not a Margaret. I don't have that kind of successful business or whatever. Tell us that story. Tell us the story of Hershey's and how that started alongside your whole sort of property investment sort of. Well, yeah, you always get something, you know, I always, I start a lot of businesses and as I told you, I'm just enrolling now in Stellenbosch University to do my PhD in uh, African women on entrepreneurship, because I mean, I think the African women are what's going to save our whole country. And um, so I, I try and get them to understand that they've got to start thinking big. They can't start thinking small, but you've got to start small and work your way up because God gives you a little bit of money and he sees how you handle it. If you handle it well, he gives you more, but if you waste it, he doesn't give you any more. And it's, if you understand how life works, it's just so much easier to work life if you understand the rules, because you come into life without a rule book and nobody tells you, you've got to learn the hard way. So um, yeah, we started small and we just built up our property portfolio. But I think the most important thing is I help other women to do that because, you know, you, as the great Zig Ziglar says, if you can have anything you want, if you help enough people to get what they want. So I help women. And as I told you, I have, I, I, of course, I have a big staff. So I work with them and I always say to them, within five years, you must own your own house. That is my aim. If you come to Hershey's, we help you. And in five years, you need to own your own house. If you don't, it's your own fault. So we had a lady and, um, you know, we have, we sell big fridges and the, the cardboard is huge. And I went out the one day and this lady was gathering up the cardboard outside the shop. And I said to her, why are you gathering up the cardboard? She said, because I'm making my house out of it. I'm here with my two children. My husband's left me and we're making a house out of your cardboard boxes. So I said to her, do you understand you don't have to do that. You know, you can build a house. And she said, no, you know, I can't. So I think a lot of women dream small. They don't dream big enough. And I said to her, I promise you, you can have your own house. And long story short, she actually came to work for me and within two years, she had built her own brick and mortar house that her two children live in. So, you know, and for me, that is my joy to see women actually thriving and to buying their own homes. Because I always say a woman who has her own home doesn't have to live with a man she doesn't want to. She can live on her own. She can feed her own children. She can look after herself. So that's why um, I try to empower women that when they start making their money, and how do you start making your money? You sell your skills. You know, I have ladies who do beading. I have ladies who do crocheting. I have um, ladies who do um, cooking. There's so many different ways you can sell your skills. So with Hirsch is how we started. My husband was a refrigeration mechanic. When I married my husband, he was 24 years old and he could not read nor write. And but he could work with his hands and he's absolutely amazing with his hands and he could fix things. So that we started fixing things. And with that money, we didn't waste that money. We saved that money. I always say when we started, we started at 169 of Schlanger Rocks Drive. And we had a tiny little shop as big as your, your bathroom. And um, it was so small that when we started selling appliances, we had to put them out on the pavement too, so there was enough room inside for the people to come in. But we started small and we, and we, but we start, I said, we, you know, rent is, is our most expensive thing here. If we can, we're paying this money every month and we're getting nothing back for it. If we can take the money we were paying for rent, and that's what I'm saying to all the women watching, the money that you'll be paying for rent, see if you can buy something. It might not be in the area you want or the style you want or whatever. You can aspire towards that, but you've got to start. So if you start with what you can afford, just stay there and build it up do it up, sell it, and then you start you start the journey. And that's what it's all about. So Valda, I don't know what you say to people when they come in, they come in and a lot of them want 100% bonds. And some people do get 100% bonds. So tell us about that, you know, getting 100% or even sometimes 110% bond because you do need the transfer fees as well. Yeah, so Valda, I think it is more into the sort of commercial side of property finance mm -hmm. herself, but she's definitely mm -hmm. got a view, I think, in terms of, of what you we're saying there, Margaret, but <clears throat> what I'd also like you to, and I'd like you to respond also to, to Margaret, but I think at the same time, I also would like you to elaborate because they asked you, you deal with a lot of investors and uh, male, female, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the landscape, where those opportunities are, what you're seeing, and the people that are actually doing, who are getting the finance from you. And, and the successes that you're seeing. I mean, look, not everybody, I mean, you know, from a finance perspective, we know not everybody gets it right, but uh, some do, but uh, there's always corrective measures. So maybe just, just tell us a little bit about that. What are you seeing from the people that are 
applying for finance through you and, and your personal experiences? So, so, um, so, so Margaret, we, we, so as staff, we mainly do commercial property, we do commercial property transactions. So it's not your 100, 100. 10 percent bonds so that's more the home loan side so typically our clients will develop and hopefully when they sell it off they will they they would like their buyers to get 100 110 percent bonds so in terms of the commercial property finance landscape our type of clients and what it is that they look at the moment um real estate across south africa it differs from from metro to metro it's got to do with sentiment it's got to do with a whole bunch of different factors um, we deal with, um, I, I always say I prefer the, the female entrepreneurs, they would come to you and they, they are very composed, they know exactly what it is that they want, most importantly, they know exactly what they do not want, and they've got a plan, they know exactly where they want to go to, so with your so across the board our clients that usually approach us, it, it, it varies, so some of them come to you and know exactly what it is that they want, some of them have a dream and then it's a massive dream. And then our job is to really bring them down from that big, big dream to make it a bit more realistic. And then for them to understand what are they capable of? What's their ability at this point in time? Not only in terms of the amount of money that they've got access to, but what it is that they can manage. Because ultimately, when you, Margaret will know, as an investor, your aim is to grow your portfolio you really want to, because it's like a child that you are raising. So you want to see this portfolio grow. So you do not want to leave it in the hands of someone else, that person to raise it. Because you as the investor, you are invested in making sure that whatever you build, you want to have control over it. Like for instance, we're talking, you, you spoke about briefly about student accommodation as an asset class. I mean, that is essentially a business. You cannot leave it in someone else's hands to manage. So those are the type of things that we look for. So the landscape outside, um, Neil, to come to your question, it, it really varies. So you've got your you've got your good notes, you've got your bad notes, but you've got your bad notes that's got the potential to become good notes. So it's a whole bag of different, um, and maybe we should start speaking about it, the different traits and characteristics in order to make it in this in this property industry. You must be resilient. You must be agile. The environment outside changes all the time. I had a conversation with someone earlier and they, they made reference to the term, we must be the, the change agility of the people of this country, especially of our property investors, because the landscape, the market changes. Somebody makes a funny comment and then the markets react. So we must be very aware of all those different things. So being in property finance at the moment, it is indeed challenging, but it is also very rewarding because you have the opportunity to play a big role in growing a young entrepreneur, going from his first property to ending up with a portfolio of 10 or maybe 20. Typical Margaret story, like she explained earlier. And then you've got your other entrepreneur that's realized that, you know what, the, the property finance landscape has really changed and it's evolved. So I've got a massive portfolio, but um, I'm actually asset rich, but cash flow poor. So then liquidity becomes the big thing. And then you start really looking at what other finance, non-bank fi non finance options are out there. And that's, that's sort of where we play at the moment. So it's a very, very complex, but very rewarding environment because actually we, we, we see how entrepreneurs grow, especially your, your starter and emerging ones. Yeah, wonderful. So, so Margaret, you I've seen you in action before with you know, and I remember there was a question from one, one of the audience at one of your live events that you had, and somebody said, "Look, if there's something that I need to invest in, what is it?" And then you, yeah. you just said it's property. No, <laughs> you didn't even think yeah. twice about it. You just like jumped straight into it. But I want you to share the story of how because you 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 got into the start, but now you've got an over a billion rand uh, mm -hmm. portfolio. I mean, you're sitting in Fort Lauderdale six months a year, six months in South Africa. You're living the life. People yeah. are looking at you and say, hey, I want to be like Molly. Yeah. And they can. Yeah. Am I right? They can, definitely. <laughs> but it does take 
<laughs> a lot of hard work and it doesn't happen overnight and i think the one thing with property you've got to understand you can't buy it today and sell it tomorrow and make a profit and of course you've got capital gains tax as well so you have to you have to know like any it's, to me it's a game and if you play any game you've got to know the rules so you've got to start studying the rules you've got to know what the rules are you know before i came to america i was studying the rules for ages you can ask my pa who's watching today i studied and i, I understood the whole market you've got to understand the market you've got to know what What's going on you know i always say to my staff you've got to know before you go before you go out and do anything you've got to know what the rules are so that's really really important and then today with the internet you're so lucky because you can do it all online but you've got to start small you, you start you buy you sell you buy you sell and you always make sure that you go a little bit bigger every time and that's how you build it up you will make some mistakes along the way but then you do that was a mistake the first time you made some mistake the second time you're an idiot don't do that again but you've got to start learning from those mistakes and make sure that you don't i mean and sometimes they're big mistakes and you it's like playing snakes and ladders you go up the ladder and come down the snake but ultimately you will always win with property i you know as i said to you i've never lost on property ever and i think it's something that we as women we really need to invest in it's there it's concrete you can see it feel it touch it um and you know, if you take out an access bond on the property like we did, that was our, our strength through COVID. Because during COVID, um, we we had salaries to pay, we had turnover to 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 take care of, and it was just and we had if we didn't have if we hadn't paid off our bonds and we didn't have access bonds, we would not be here today. So um, I always thank my property company for making sure that I paid everything, but I kept my bond every bond had like one rand in it so that when i needed it i could draw on it and that um in turn can help fund your business because you know you can look at outside funding for your business but your bond is a very cheap way of funding your business when you when you actually look at it so i think a lot of people need to take that into account as well, well yeah tell us about the, the it's the commercial property i think where your business is housed because i think you bought it for a song and i think you got it an offer which was double and i think you decided yeah. to retain it and i think yeah. you yeah, tell us that story. No, yeah, so I mean, with all our properties, we started and we we bought them, and it's so good now because we, other people are paying a fortune in rent, we aren't, you know. So um, I'll tell you about my Cape Town property. When I went to Cape Town in the year 2012, I mean, you think Jan van Riebe got there in 1652, and there's only a little strip of land there, and there's a mountain and the sea, and that little strip of land had been sold and sold and sold, and there was nothing. And people said to me, "You're never going to find a piece of land in Cape Town. Forget it," you know. And I said, "No, I'll keep looking." And I looked, and I looked. For for two years and I found this piece of land and they said you well you can't buy it because you, got, you can't build on it it's at its maximum and but you know there's always a way and that's what I love about South Africans we know how to make a plan so I went and I knocked on the door of this guy and I said to him you know I want to buy this property that he owned and he said foot sack bugger off go away don't come back out but I was tenacious it was exactly what I wanted so I put my vision board up I had my vision board I had a picture of it I had my architect draw what the shop would look like and I went back to him and every month I would phone him, I would email him, I would call him. And he kept saying, go away, I'm not going to sell it. And one day, two years later, so that's why I say it's not a fast thing. It's two years later, out the blue, he phoned me. Now, at that stage, that property was worth about six, probably, you know, the municipal valuation was six million. So retail would probably be about 10 million. He said, I want 20 million for that property. And I said to him, I'll take it. And he, he out of the blue, he just, he just said, when I bought it, knowing that I couldn't build much on it because it was at its bulk of that whole area. But we went in and we, we um, I was very fortunate and through property, you get to know people who can really help you along the way. So I knew Marcus Caps from Key Projects and he helped me. We got it and that's how we built our Cape Town store. And when I look at what I paid for the land, what I paid for the building, I've been offered more than three times that amount for that building. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could not have made that money any other way. I could have put it in stocks and shares. I could have done whatever. I could not have made that much money if I hadn't invested in the property. So that's why I say to people, it's so important to invest in property because you've got the capital appreciation. But yes, you do have to pay capital gains tax if it, if it gets over a certain amount. But at the end of the day, it's so worthwhile because you will have something concrete. You've got something that you can rely on you can get something you can draw with bonds on um it's really it's something that as a business it's so important to own your own property that you're not paying rent and making somebody else rich at the end of the day wonderful so Velda, um and and i mean it's so it's it's it, i think it's so fantastic to see here the, the property protagonist yeah and i think 
you know, anybody that buys stock is probably saying, well, listen, you know, I think I made a mistake <laughs> over here. <laughs> but um, getting to, to you, Valder, now, if somebody wants to cross that bridge, remember, it's a big divide now moving from buying, a, whether it's your first house or your first investment property, to buying your first commercial property. So, um, and and you are in that finance game in particular for buildings. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you, and it's not only inner city, it's it's sort of in sort of CBD areas, areas of growth. Um, and we're looking at sort of student accommodation, mixed use type buildings and uh, affordable type housing, which you've actually financed a number of affordable housing. Somebody that wants to get into that, and it's quite a big shift moving from just buying a house and selling and profiting from a house. Mm-hmm. What what advice would you have for somebody that wants to break into that sector, uh, into that commercial sector, in terms of preparation? What do they need to do? Because, I mean, you're getting the applications, you're seeing it come onto your desk. And uh, pretty much you can say, well, this is not right and this is not right. Is there a formula or not? Okay, so so let me just start. Okay, so TAF previously used to only focus on the inner cities. That is your, 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 basically your inner cities, your CBDs that um, needed some sort of regeneration and um, all of those things. So we do, we still focus in the inner cities, but also in city, what we call in city. So it's, it's a bit, it's a broader area that basically as long as the area falls within the parameters of the of the city, then we can consider it. And also we look at factors of, for instance, does it support local economic development, transportation, and all of those things. Because ultimately, affordable housing is developed because you do not want people renting from you with five cars. They typically would use um, public transport, reliable public transport, or they will have cars. So you need to make some provision for parking. Um, Before I answer your question, something that Margaret also mentioned is uh, property is an investment, and that's exactly what it is. If you want to go into property, you must realize that it's investment. If you go into it for four, you get it at a dirt cheap price and you can improve it and flip it, very good. But usually property is a very patient investment. So if you want to get cash flows, monthly cash flows out of it, it won't work. Margaret will tell you she built a portfolio because you need to constantly reinvest. With any surpluses, you need to reinvest in that property if you want to get that capital appreciation and eventually when you sell to get that very good price for the property. So that's one. And then is there a formula? You know what? Not really. You to to invest in a commercial property, you must know that you must be intentional about it and you must understand that it is an investment first and foremost. It's a bit different from buying a whole lot of houses and renting them out because here you're actually focusing on a building you might have, for instance, let's make the example, you've got a mixed use building. So you've got your retail and commercial tenants on the ground floor, you need to manage them. You must then understand the process of leasing or otherwise you need to get professionals in to assist you with that. That's one. So you need to understand how commercial leases work because there's a difference between how a commercial lease works and a residential one. And then you must also understand the different types of laws that governs all of this. If it's sectional titles, there's a sectional title schemes, Act, Management Act, and all of those ones. If it's a normal standalone residential building with commercial on the ground floor, you need to start managing those tenants. It's, it's, it's all these different types of nuances that you need to take into account you must be so you ask if there's a formula so my first question will be what it is what is it that you want to buy what do you have something at the moment so that i know exactly that you're not going from having not one commercial property to suddenly wanting to own a massive one because that comes to ability and what you're capable of and then something else that i usually ask where because you you Different locations or different areas go through. I say, I usually say it goes through, like all of us, and especially females, you transform. So no locations, they do transform and they change. So at a specific point in time, a specific location might work for a type of building and an asset class. Other times it won't because it's influenced by external factors, urban management, and all of those things. 
So coming back to your question, when somebody comes through the door, wanting to transform or grow from one, maybe one house that they own, that they're renting out as an investment to a building, you need to see firstly in terms of your, your equity, what, what is it that you can buy for that, for that money? And then in terms of your capabilities. And you know what, sometimes you can afford that 100 unit building, but then I will say, okay, now we need to, in terms of, remember we said we hand holding, we are a bit different from the banks. We will then say, okay, fine, Margaret, you want to buy this building. You clearly have the financial capability, but then you need to, we need to grow your management capability. And then we will get the different property management companies involved and we will remain involved to make sure that you have an asset that can grow in value. So then I can get my second loan, my third loan, my fourth loan, and Absolutely. so we carry on. Yeah. And you'll finance us forever. <laughs> 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 no, great. So for those of you confused, you, you're watching Empowering Success, Women in Property and Business Lessons from Leading Trailblazers. We've got Valda Derrick, so we've got Margaret Hirsch. We're having a great discussion over here. So first of all, let's let's just get into, you know, the audience is very quiet. We've got over 70 odd people here. So, and you know, there's a Q&A box. It's on the right hand bottom side of your screen. And I know you all said hello, good morning and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, yeah. how about some Q&As for Valda and, uh, and Margaret? I mean, they love this. I mean, this is their passion. This is their excitement. I mean, Margaret got up at four o'clock this morning to be with you. You know, I mean, can you believe it? She's in Fort Lauderdale. She's on American time. We're on South African time. We're halfway through our day already. She's only starting a business day. And uh, so, yeah, so please, you know, she spent the time. Let's let's hear from you guys. So, Margaret, next step, what do you, what do you think? That, I mean, you've, you've touched a little bit in terms of, you know, formula and, you know, what it takes and all that kind of stuff because you are busy. Yes. You from I think from the time that you get up to the time you put your head on the pillow at night, um, it sounds that like you you've achieved a lot. <laughs> no, I think you know they say busy people get the most done, and 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 I think to all the women out there who are thinking how the hell am I going to do this? You know, as I say, the first thing you've got to start. The second thing you've got to work really really hard, and you and I, I do work long hours. I always did work long hours in South Africa as well. So um, you know, you don't have time for you know taking time off and that and while you're building this is up there a message no, there? working hard is that is that no. is that one of your messages? people always say to me what is the secret to success it's two words yeah. work hard work work hard hard work that's what it is it's all about that you've got to work hard you've got to do whatever you do to keep um and i always say you've got to have two streams of income so all the women who say but i've got a full-time job yes you have but you might not have that forever and a lot of people found that out over covid we don't know what's going to happen next if you have your property at least you've got something that you you can rent out even if you just rent out a room in your house you know and or airbnb it or something like that um and there again it's not easy i tried airbnb oh my gosh that wasn't easy you know they'd come in for one night I'd have to go the next day change all the sheets and the tiles and everything but um the flat that I was getting 15,000 rand a month for I could get 60,000 a month Airbnb being it but it was a lot of extra hard work as well so um uh, truth or lies eventually after a while I just said no I've had this let me just get my 15,000 and not have the hassle so you know um so you've got to, you've got to see uh, there is a lot of hard work involved whichever way you're going to go and with tenants you know tenants come in and you when you look at the shopping centers um I looked at the shopping centers and I thought you know they have the same they have truest for sheenies all these you know same old same old in every shopping center um, I wonder what happens to all the little entrepreneurs. Well, then I found out because I, I had a shopping center and I put all these little entrepreneurs in and they all started off, oh, very good and fantastic, but they soon petered out. And then I had empty shops, so people are paying me rent. So, you know, it's not for sissies. I've got to tell you that property is not for sissies. You've got to be tough and you've got to, you know, be resilient and you've got to be able to roll with the punches and just get up and keep on going. So I think to me, you know, so it, it, I would, I'm now very much more fussy with my tenants. I'm, I really make sure that, um, and for those, and I do rent my Samsung stores are like in Sandton City, Mall of Africa. Boy, you have to put your life on the line for those to get into those shopping centers. So now I know why they do it because I was so lenient. I'm going to help these poor guys. Well, it didn't help you at all because they just helped themselves at the end of the day. So you, but as I say, it's, the whole thing is a learning curve. You learn as you go along with different types of properties and different investments um i also went into student accommodation 
uh, quite a lot. And then a lot of them were paid by bursaries. But then at the end of the year, the bursary didn't pay. So the person stayed there the whole year and you never got your rent. So, you know, that's also something you've got to take care of and make sure that you are on top of that. So, yeah, it's it, uh, every single thing is a learning curve. There's no book that you can study that's going to show you how it is. You've got to go in and you've got to learn on your feet and you have to be able to make decisions quickly and know what's going on very, very quickly as well. So I think that's the big thing um, from our side. Okay, excellent. Okay, we, we got the questions rolling in. I'm glad to see that. So everybody has is, uh, is, is come about. So please submit those questions. It's very important. Your feedback. Um, Margaret's waiting for them. Valda's waiting for it. So I'm going to, first of all, because the second one I see is uh, for, for Valda. Uh, the first one is, and it's from Michelle. And she asked, is leasing a property as a small business always a bad idea? I think it's an excellent question. It really, really is good. And Valda, I'll even maybe give you to give an answer. But Margaret, your thoughts, because I know you said bye, 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 bye originally, but your thoughts around that. Yeah. You know, if you lease something, you're paying somebody else's bond off. So you can go ahead and lease. But at the end of the day, I always tell my entrepreneurs, buy your own property because one, you can work from home. Most jobs now you can work from home. So you'll have your home and you'll have your business in one. But if you've got a home and you want a separate business, you can go. And I mean, I, 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 as I told you, I'm in shopping centers and I pay a fortune in rent. And it kills me every time I do that because um, I just think jeepers, I could put that into my own business. I could have, when I paid in Santa City, I could have bought half the building already, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's it's a catch twenty two situation. But I always advise to buy rather than lease because at the end of the day, you'll have that capital appreciation. If you need to fund something in your business, you can draw on your access bond, and it, it's so it's it's a double win for me. Yeah, wise advice. And your thoughts around that, Velda? Do you agree with uh, Margaret? So I guess as a, as a small business. Um, you need to make sure, depending on the life cycle, where it is in the life cycle. So definitely, if you can afford to and your business is settled and sustainable, I would say then you then you need to, then you need to buy because then you, you you have gone through the growing pains of the business and in terms of sustainability, you can comfortably say that you are comfortable. Okay, but sometimes when you're starting out as a small business, you need to make sure because I mean you you get external. Um, factors that impact on your business like competition and suddenly other depending on what you sell um, another version of the product that you might and, and that will impact on your sustainability as a business so I guess the answer is if you from my side if it all depends where you are in the life cycle of your business and the industry that you're in ideally you want to own your premises but there's also enough arguments to say that you know what until you're at a stage where you can say that listen i am comfortable with the sustainability of the business going forward in the next say five years then um, i would say to, to rent is is really not an issue because i mean as a small business you will get the benefit because it goes off your your income statement so from a tax point of view you you should be okay yeah. yeah so i think the goal would always be to own and i think it's a it's a good thing because i think and I think there is arguments depending, of course, where you're at in, in different life stages. But mm -hmm. I think Margaret will say, let's do that deal. Let's try and work for that, which is also not a bad thing. You know? So to, I think it's great, great uh, balanced viewpoints. Yeah. So uh, from Liesl, we've got a question. I think it's more directed at you, Valda. So mm -hmm. it's particularly pertaining to Tough. It says, we have attempted business with Tough before, but we have never been able to pull a deal off successfully. We found that Tough's valuation system disqualified the buildings in prime areas which are fully occupied in perfect condition. We came to the conclusion that Tuff mostly focus on buildings that come in at extremely low amounts, which need a lot of attention, etc. And we would, however, be very honored to do a deal together. So I know I happen to know Lisa because and in fact Lisa helped me buy a whole bunch of houses up in Johannesburg and Pretoria. And she is an excellent estate agent. I mean, she is absolutely amazing. We climbed the top of Ponty Tower together. And we <laughs> literally looked over Ellis Park. And I've never seen anybody in high hills take me to the top of Ponty Tower. <laughs> Lisa Oprah's did that. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, Lisa, I'll just tell you that story. Huh? And uh, so thank you for your your your, your question. Yeah, uh, she's amazing. So maybe it could be a time when it was done. So maybe your response to that, first of all, Velda, in terms of what Lisa so the next time Liesl and I will climb Ponty together in our stiletto. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, no, it's a bit difficult to answer that question, but in terms of our valuation methodology, 
we follow the standard industry um, capitalization method. So it's basically where we look at the at the market rentals of the building. Sometimes you would buy a building that where rentals are picked at below what the market is, and there might be reasons for that. So we we usually do what we call an open market valuation. So we use market related um, rentals, and the the expense factor takes into account the bad debt and vacancy allowance, which is very important for residential buildings because there is quite a lot of tenant turnover depending on the node that you're in. And then we use a, a capitalization rate to get to a value. So, but I need to qualify to say that tough, if your valuation comes in at say a hundred million. So we usually say we finance a maximum of 80%. It doesn't mean that we will do 80 million because um, business, our, our, our business model is driven by cash flows like most of the banks as well. So we look at what your cash flow, your net cash flow can actually service and that will determine what sort of loan we can do against the property. It might end up being about 60% of the ultimate value. So I'd like to have an engagement with Liesl maybe offline and see where that was coming. Okay, great. Wonderful. That's good. So, Liesl, please reach out to Valdez. She'll definitely help you. I can tell you now. Um, so, Margaret, a question for you. You spoke about paying off a bond quickly, probably in five years instead of a longer period. And how do you do that? You just take all the money that you would be doing, your hair, your nails, you do them yourself, the coffee cups, <laughs> you know, to go and standing at Starbucks. <laughs> And um, all the fast food, you know, I've never eaten a McDonald's in my life. I've never eaten Kentucky Fried Chicken in my life. Um, so I don't waste money on all those things. Um, I'm vegan, so I don't have to pay for meat, chicken, fish, milk, eggs, anything like that. So, um, you know, it's it's your lifestyle. Poverty is related to what you spend, not to what you earn. I have people who earn a very little who are wealthy, and I have people who earn a lot who are poor. So, um, you know, you've got to take all that wasted money that you'd waste on, on all sorts of different things and put it into your property and pay it off quickly. Because I see the next question is, you know, I've, I've got the properties, I'm paying them off, but um, oh, where's that question? But I, I, I want some more money because I want to expand and expand and oh, put yes. extra room. Yes. Well, if you'd paid yes. all that money off, you would have that in your bond, on your access bond. You can take an access bond if you paid it off. Mm -hmm. But if you can't leave your bond at full and then just go and add more on because you're going to end up overcapitalizing by doing that and you're not going to get your money back in time. So um, I think, you know, definitely if you I always advocate pay your bond off as quickly as you possibly can because it saves you so much money in the long run. And you, there's a whole lot of things online that you can do to show you how much you save. And um, for all of mine, I paid my bonds off as quickly as I possibly could. And I do borrow on them. If I need money for my for my business, if I have, there's a special coming in and I want to buy up a whole lot of stuff, I, I will access that bond. I will use that money for my business. And then when I got the money, I pay the bond back. You know, so it's it's definitely a way. Um, yeah, but that's excellent. You... I mean, it, it, you know, there's an incredible discipline that you've just said there, Margaret, mm -hmm. in terms of, you, you know, how people spend their their excess cash where yeah. you you said well let's take that money let's rather put it into an asset that gives me a return yes. i mean now we've got to actually look at our budget and say well where's this where's the money going yeah. you know is it going to kfc is it going to coffees is it going to hair nails and all that <laughs> and maybe is there another way can i do it cheaper better whatever it may be not to say we won't do anything but uh but <laughs> certainly we'll control the expenditure a lot better and you, you and can't have everything it. you've got to be disciplined to be in profit property because property is big money and you You've got to be disciplined. And if you look after the small money, the big money will look after itself. But if you're wasting it, and my entrepreneurs that I work with, you know, I start with, with them with nothing. I mean, my, one of my entrepreneurs, I started, all she had in her hand was 30 rand. We started a business with that, which is, is multi-million today. But um, the first thing she wanted to do is go and do her hair and her nails. I said, you can't afford to do that now. When you're rich one day, you can do that. But now you've got to put that money back into your business. You've got to keep, but we had to keep buying stock to keep the business going until her business grew. And and now she does her hair and her nails and she drives Mercedes Benz as well. So yeah, well, but you yeah. can't do that the first week. It doesn't work like that. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> okay, well, you've answered the, the question You've touched on it with the two rental houses currently paying the bank with no equity as it now I see opportunities to expand. And I agree the access, the access bond funding would be the You've most You've got to be careful to overcapitalize. If you've, you've got a full yeah. bond and you're going to take an extra loan to do extra rooms, 
how those rooms are going to pay it back and what's your interest going to be related to the, the money you're going to get for those rooms because for my student housing the most I could get for us because my house is 17 bedrooms and three cottages and the most I could get for that cottage was 4,000 rand a month but most students want to pay about one five to two five they don't want to pay much more than that and mm -hmm. so you can't go and borrow a whole lot of money and then you're only getting a little bit back on it so you've got to do your sums you have to be able to do your sums first you know, I always say when I wrote my trick in 1967 and maths was then just arithmetic, but it was a very good arithmetic and it taught me how to do the, the sums and make sure that you're going to get a return on your investment. You don't want to invest all that money and then you're not getting enough return back. So, Valda, I mean, that from an investor perspective, when we're doing application for finance, we've got to know our numbers, not so? I mean, you've got to know what the rental incomes are, got to know Absolutely. the areas of it. No, absolutely. And you must also know, as Margaret has just said now perfectly, you must just be sure, be careful not to overcapitalize because you know what? The money that you spend on creating that one, two, three extra units, that money should be able to pay back the loan, plus there must be a return. So sometimes we just want to grow and we want to, we want to have this massive investment but it needs to pay for itself and it needs to show your return. Because remember, as an investor, you can then safely tuck that money away under the bed. So you need to be compensated for the risk that you take in investing in the property because remember your cash flows are coming from your tenants. So it's a risk because the cash flow might not come in. Margaret yeah. said earlier that sometimes you accommodated students for a year, bursary monies doesn't come in, then what do you do? So you, as an investor, you must be compensated for the risk that you take and that is your return. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, Margaret, you, you you actually posted on the webinar chat and you, you actually said the best time to sell a property is never, which I love. Yeah. Because, uh, and I mean, I've worked with the likes of Robert Kiyosaki directly and also Dolph Perez. We've done a lot of tours around both South Africa and in, in, in and offshore as well. And that's exactly what they say is that, you know, you never sell. You keep this property forever. And, you know, you take the value to, you know, and then you get your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, and you you build up on that one. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, I've always statement? said that, which is strange because yeah. I've just recently put two properties on the market. But, you know, um, I think you change over time. When I bought those properties yeah. sort of 20 odd years ago, mm -hmm. I was into schools and to children and to students and that type of thing. Now I'm changing. I'm going more commercial and and be buying bigger properties ourselves. And the properties have gone up. You know, at the moment, I'm, I'm negotiating on a piece of the property in Cape Town for 100 million. That's just for the land. We haven't even started the building yet. So, you know, the, the, the properties do go up a lot. So sometimes I will sell to put that money into something else. So, um, yeah, that's the only time that I would really sell. But uh, my my formula always has been if you buy a property, you keep it and you just keep it going. And you've got to, a lot of people don't realize it, and you've got to renovate it a lot of the time. You can't just leave it and let the, you know, the roof fall down and the gutters fall off and it looks terrible. Then you you don't get as, as much as you need for it. So um, in my property company here, actually, you know, in, in America, you've got to do everything yourself. So I've been painting, I've painted ceilings, I've done flooring, done plumbing, um, everything to keep it up to date all the time. And I think that's one thing a lot of investors don't realize that you've got to spend money on repairs and maintenance on an ongoing basis to make sure that it always looks good you always keep it neat and tidy and that's something that you've got to when you start doing your sums you've got to take that into account as well a lot of people forget about that maintenance thing they think oh we're gonna, mm -hmm. just going to look after itself kind of thing and it's such a critical <laughs> it's such a critical thing so it's an excellent point that's made there okay we've got we've got right about eight minutes to go and what i want to do is it just you know i think you started off margaret on your side and mentioned the fact about saving Yes. Now, if somebody, you know, and, and I'm, I'm pertaining it also to the question, you know, with like that was brought up earlier where you said, you know, KFC, nail spending, all that kind of stuff. How yeah. does somebody, first of all, start saving? Because some people have a problem with that. Yeah, they and, do. Uh, you know, they do. Yeah. And mm. a company like Hirsch is what we have, a facility we offer to our staff is that we'll take a portion of their salary and we will save it for them because if they sit in their account they just want to spend it and of course with ubuntu when you've got a little bit of money or you suddenly have a lot of friends and relations who need desperately desperately need that money for different things so so um, you you feel that you have to give it so we help our staff by saving their money for them we'll help them to save until they need it for whatever um you know, otherwise you just start taking that money that you'd spend on the Starbucks or 25 Rand and putting it into a separate account. 
And you'd be surprised how quickly it adds up. You know, I might be able to tell you, I'm a serial saver. I have accounts for this. And then I put it all into the money market account. And when I've got that, I buy something. You know, you've got to start. And if it just starts with your 25 cents that you would be buying your Starbucks for or the, you know, the 40 rand for your Kentucky bucket or whatever, you take that money and you say, I'm going to save it. And you just start a little bit at a time. And you think it's not going to add up. You know, I mean, I've had people who put their cents into a jar and take it in and get that. You've got to start. It, it all starts with the first step and you've always got to uh, save 10 percent, but you've got to learn to invest so you've got to invest 10 percent of your money as well so you've got to find an investment that you think is, i'm going to put this money in and i'm going to get more than i would on a say a fixed deposit in the building society type of thing and then you you add up from that but the most important thing is that you've got to give to charity because you as you give you open yourself up to receive You've always got to give before you can receive. So you give the blessing and then the blessings come back to you. And that's how it works. And as I said, if you understand how life works, you've got your little savings account, you're investing a little bit at a time to, so that you learn about investments and then you're giving to charity, helping people um, you know, that are worse off than you. And then the other 70%, that's what you live on. And then you've got to build that up. Sometimes you don't need 70%. One of the, my entrepreneurs that I started off many years ago, I said to him, you know, I, I, I can't believe how wealthy you are today. And he said, Margaret, I didn't change my lifestyle. I'm still living in the same house. I'm, did buy it but that's the house I was renting I bought the house I'm still driving my same car I haven't changed my car every year and that's a car by the way it slurps your money that really slurps your money I mean I had I had a, a lot of old crocs for a long time until I could afford my Porsche but um yeah you, know, you you can't go and splurge on a Porsche as you start you've got to really battle and, and struggle and and you know have these old crocs you know just get you from A to B until you get yourself organized and you can and can buy something decent so you know it starts slowly as I said the whole thing is to start slowly and build up and it does build up if you're not sure what you do is you take a checkers board you know with the black and white checks on it and you put one grain of rice and then two grains of rice and four grains of rice and eight grains of rice and 16 grains of rice and you see that's how and that's how your money builds up over time it built, starts very slowly but it starts you can't even fit the rice onto the checkers board and you get to the end job awesome <laughs> okay we got two more questions just before we go because we, we are running out a little bit of time but what i'm going to do is going to pose the two questions and then you can both comment on it and then uh then we'll do the final wrap and uh but so far it's been an intriguing fantastic discussion it's been wonderful and uh, so, so thank you to both of you. Uh, it's been so inspirational. There's been such good advice. It's been incredible. You're really uh, making women proud. And I mean, I'm learning so much and it's just reminders and stuff. It is fantastic. So thank you very much. So Liesl said, and she said, uh, Liesl again, we often meet with investors whose stock fell and pool their money and expertise. Fabulous. Right property. Yeah. And any platforms or clubs you can recommend for female investors? Well, you mentioned, obviously, the, what you're doing, obviously, with Hirsch employees. Uh, the second one, um, it's, and this is related to, um, uh, and it's from uh, Dr. Yolanda Peterson, and she's doing an investment which is actually in Sudan. And she said, investment funds approved, consortium started and sorted, location, Sudan. I would run it a mile if you had to ask me. Well, well she says, <laughs> I am personally nervous yeah. based on the volatility of the Absolutely. country. My partners are not, and the project is affordable housing for Sudan. Why not affordable housing for South Africa? Absolutely. <laughs> so your thoughts you are... That, I work with Lionesses of Africa, and we work around the whole of Africa. And I went to Nigeria... Uh, with them and we went everywhere in a police car and we I was staying at the hotel in the middle of, of, of Lagos and I said to the guy there's an appliance store there I'd love to go and visit it he said no madam you can't walk across there if you walk across there we're you'll never come back so i mean you you actually don't realize you think south africa's got its problems these other countries have huge problems and i've worked in, in a lot of them but some that we can't go to sudan is one they, they just says, not... My spirit says run. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> run. My heart <advice> says run. <laughs> but, you know, just having said that, and I'd just like to make a comment. In South Africa at the moment, we had the Reside Conference last month where we talked about affordable housing, social housing. There is so many opportunities in South Africa. It is unbelievable. Yeah. And, Valda, you know, you're at the forefront of that. Because you're seeing these finance, you know, applications coming in, and I think we we've got such an underhoused population, and we really want to get put people in houses, as Margaret said right at the start. And I think that the, the opportunities are in front of us, and sometimes we don't see it. Yeah, we just got to open our eyes to them and see them here in South Africa. So, Valda, I know we're gonna. 
give your thoughts on that and then we'll do the final wrap. Um, your thoughts on that. You know what? Coming back to South Africa, you are so spot on. You know, there is a whole lot of opportunities. And sometimes I think we create the mountains for ourselves. I always say, you know what? Life is a journey. We are always on this journey and then we create our own speed bumps. We, <laughs> we visualize them and they're not actually there. So we need to ask the right questions. We need to, you know what? Nobody is ever unreachable. I always tell to my own, say to my own children, you know what? You, if you want to know something, you ask. Nobody. I think people are just not that bold to say no to someone's face. Yeah. They will always say but or maybe give you an answer, but they will one out of 10 times somebody will be bold enough to say no directly to your face. So we need to push. There's a whole lot of opportunities. We need to ask the right questions. But most importantly, we need to make sure that we get to the right people. And as, as females, especially, I saw the one question in the chat, as females, especially, we need to get together and we need to be bold enough to ask those right questions. I mean, nobody will, will say no. There will always be somebody reaching out a hand. And that is what, exactly what we must do. We must help each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, we, we've come to the bewitching hour. I'm going to get to each one of you just to do your final wrap, your final thoughts. And if you would like people to reach out to you, you know, you're welcome to. Come on, uh, Margaret. You run a, also a very successful women's uh, network. Well, I was going uh, to say, so I think one of the yeah. things in the chat says, I'm, 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 I'd love to learn more and start my own business. Well, join our ladies' yeah. groups. We have ladies' mm. groups. It's all about networking. It's not who you know that makes a difference. Who knows you that's going to make a difference? So come into our networkings at all her stores. They're always on my, my platforms. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and um, yeah, and come and join other women and, and learn from their mistakes. And that was the, the whole thing with my women's groups that we learn from each other's mistakes. Your know, business is business, no matter what you do. But I just my wrap up is, and um, you know, we live in a land of wealth and opportunity. You don't understand that you push the, the you fed all this rubbish through the news. Don't listen to the news. Just go out and look up yourself we live in a country of wealth and opportunity there's so much out there we are fantastic resilient people we are amazing people we will help each other uh, every step of the way um it's only when you come to america where it's like doggy dog and everybody's out for themselves you see the difference you, you appreciate how fantastic south africa is you we have so many good things but what do we do we focus on the bad, bad things stop focusing on the bad things focus on the good in south africa and we'll all get much better thank you awesome margaret i think that what a wonderful way to finish valda your final words my final words would be firstly to the professional finance property finance professionals like myself out there let's continue support and what supporting each other work together collaborate 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 for the female entrepreneurs out there please continue to do what you're doing, continue to do more, continue to strive to do more. And please, there is no no's. When you get to know, you pick up again and you know there's the Valdas out there, there's the Margarets out there. If we can do it in this wonderful country, all of you can. And for the girl child out there, if you look at people again like myself and Margaret and all the wonderful women in this country, you can. You do not need to be held back by your circumstances for the little girl in the rural village, for the other girl in a private school everybody is equal and that is what we need to to work towards we need to work on it from an equal platform and we need to make sure that everybody gets the wonderful opportunities that this country offers wow well, what a way to finish i think that was fantastic i think if you know if the audience could do a round of applause we would do it i think it was really an insightful inspirational discussion and i really want to thank you margaret and really want to thank you valda for sharing all your valuable insights and your expertise with us today i mean it's really been truly inspiring and, and to our audience we also appreciate your active participation and engagement throughout this master class and all your questions i think you know where to reach out if you want to reach out to Velda, those who want to break into the market, she finances great, wonderful commercial property, lots of opportunities. So, Dr. Yolanda, I think you got to talk to Velda. You know, we got to find a deal for you here in South Africa, not in Sudan. And uh, we need to speak to Velda about financing that and getting the financiers. And also, Margaret's inspiration as well has been absolutely fantastic so we hope you've gained valuable knowledge and you're now motivated to take action towards your wealth creation journey so we're going to see all the women coming up in the world they're already purchasing all the properties here in south africa mm -hmm. so they're already taking the lead so before i close i just want to remind you of our next upcoming webinar that's going to not going to be next thursday so thursday after thursday the 31st of august titled unveiling profitable strategies 
with a purpose. That's impact investing. And we're actually looking at the distressed market there. And to register, you can find the link in the chat box below, or you could visit the rei.co.za website and you can register on the event banner under upcoming events. Thank you all once again to Margaret and to Valda, to our esteemed panel of ladies and uh, celebrating Women's, Women's Month. It's been fantastic and sharing their incredible insights. And to all of you for joining us, we wish you all the best on your path to success and wealth creation. Stay safe and successful investing until our next webinar on the 31st of August. This is Neil Peterson of Real Estate Investors signing out.